Hey my friend, Arthur Moore is here. In this video we're going to look at the inverse trigonometric functions and differentiation. Alright, so we're going to evaluate this expression. It said evaluate the expression without using a calculator. Alright, so first of all I use the acronym so Katoa. And you may have different uh, sayings for this, but that helps me to remember that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent when you're looking at that right triangle. Uh, also, you want to recognize that arctan is the same thing as the inverse of tan. So, if I rewrote this as, let's just look at the arctan part first. The inverse of tangent um, of three-fourths. And we want to figure out what that's equal to. Well, we can say that tangent of some variable, some number, we'll call it x, uh, equals three-fourths. And we know that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent in a right triangle. So we can make a little right triangle here. And we know that uh, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So let's put this angle x here. And that means that the opposite would be 3 over 4. And we could have put it in the other corner as well, but I just put it there. All right, so um, that helps us out. What we're trying to find is sine of arctangent of 3, 4. So if we can make this right triangle and we know that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, well, we, if we can uh, find the hypotenuse, then we can find the sine of arctangent of 3, 4. Okay, so we use that arctan to help us to set up this right triangle. Now we want to find the, the hypotenuse, the measure of the hypotenuse, and then find sine of, uh, using this same information, sine of x, and that will give us what we're looking for, the sine of arctan of 3 fourths. So uh, to find the hypotenuse, use your Pythagorean theorem. And we'll call this side, we'll call it Y, or we'll call it C. Let's see here. So we'll call it C. And we know that C, we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Therefore, C equals the square root of A squared uh, plus B squared. So in this case, C equals the square root of um, 9 plus 16, which is 5. So we know that this opposite side over here, the hypotenuse, we know the hypotenuse is equal to 5. And we know that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse sine of y is equal to opposite over hypotenuse or sine of x um, therefore it's equal to three fifths so the sine of arctan of three fourths is equal to three fifths and we just follow that pattern uh, for these so we'll do a couple more and, and look at it. So this one we want the secant of the arc sine of um, four fifths. So again, we know that's saying that sine of some number, and we'll call it x, equals four fifths. So from that, we can draw a triangle here, a right triangle, and Uh, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse, so that, that's where the 4 and the 5 goes, given from that uh, sine of x. 
and again we use the Pythagorean theorem to find and we'll call it side a so we know that that's going to be the square root of c squared minus b squared if we call this bottom side side a using the Pythagorean theorem that would be the square root of c squared minus b squared or 25 minus 16 square root 25 minus 16 which is the square root of 9 so we know that that other side is equal to 3 now we were trying to find secant and we know secant is related it's the inverse of um, or reciprocal of cosine so if we can find cosine of x then we can flip that the reciprocal of that and that will give us secant uh, so cosine of x adjacent over hypotenuse so if we're looking at angle x the adjacent side is 3 the hypotenuse is 5 therefore secant of x is 5 thirds therefore the secant of arc sine of four fifths is equal to five thirds. Okay. So hopefully you get the hang of that. Let's see here if there's a. And all of those problems are very similar to that. So let's. Um, go ahead and look at the derivatives of uh, inverse trigonometric functions. All right, so derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions, we have those here. You may want to pause the video and write those down. And we're going to use those uh, derivatives for the next, to find the derivative of the next, on the next few functions here, the next few problems. Okay, so number 39, we have f of x equals 2 arc sine of x minus 1. So that goes with that first one there that says the derivative of that is equal to u prime over the square root of 1 minus u square. Okay, um, so we have a constant multiplier here, and let's let u equal um, the x minus 1 so if we let u equal x minus 1 then we know that u prime is equal to 1 so f prime of x equals 2 times 1 over I think I can get away with parentheses here 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared and u is equal to x minus 1 so 1 minus x minus 1 squared now the computer may take the answer just like this I'm going to clean it up a little bit because it can be simplified I do believe so x minus 1 squared I'm going to use um, a minus b squared to multiply that out so 2 over the square root so going back and using a little bit of algebra the first term squared minus 2 times the terms 2 times 1 times x plus the last term squared and then I can distribute that subtraction that negative throughout that parentheses there to clear the parentheses so we have 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1 underneath the radical sign and then we see that the ones will cancel each other out 1 minus 1 is 0 so that gives me f prime of x equals 2 over the square root of negative x squared plus 2x
Okay, let's look at number 41. Uh, g of x equals 3 times arc cosine of x over 2. Okay. So the arc cosine derivative, that's equal to negative u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And we have the constant multiplier again. And we know that u is equal to uh, 1 half of x, x over 2. It's the same thing as 1 half of x. Therefore, u prime um, is equal to simply 1 half. Okay, so let's put that in our formula here, derivative formula. So negative u prime, so negative one half all over the square root. And let's not forget that three constant multiplier. All right, so one minus u square, u, u in this uh, case is one half of x. So one minus one half x squared. All right, so again, um, I'm just going to clean this up some using my algebra. So three times negative one half is negative three halves. And then 1 minus 1 fourth x squared. Okay. And you probably can just uh, multiply by the reciprocal and leave it like, like so. I'm going to take it a step farther. All right, so one minus one fourth x squared, I can get a common denominator of four. And if I get a common denominator of four, that would leave, uh, I will have to multiply that one by four. So that will give me four minus one uh, x squared. And then if I, that would allow me to take the square root of the four in my denominator which will give me the square root of 4 minus 1x squared all over 2. And then if I multiply by the reciprocal of negative 3 halves, that would be multiplying the top and the bottom. Or uh, let's see here, multiply. Let's multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared to get rid of that and that those twos would cancel out and that will give me 3 over the square root of 4 minus x squared so again I'll use a little bit of algebra there to clean that problem up Okay, and if you're wondering from here to here, uh, just to be clear, all I did was got a common denominator, which was 4. So I made that 1 into 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 x squared. Uh, and then I kept the common denominator and that gave me 4 minus x squared in the numerator there. So that's how I got that 4 minus 1 x squared. All right, let's look at a couple more of these problems. All right here we have uh, the f of x equals arc secant of 2x. And the derivative formula for that is u prime over the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. So in this case, u is equal to 2x and u prime is equal to 2. All right, so f prime of x 
u prime so 2 over absolute value of u so the absolute value of 2x uh, times the square root of u squared so 2x squared minus 1 So let's see here. So f of x equals 2. And the absolute value of 2x is the same thing as the absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of x times the square root of 4x squared minus 1. And we know the absolute value of 2 is just 2. So those will cancel each other out. And that will give us 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of 4x squared minus 1. Okay, and the final problem for this video, um, we have h of x equals x squared times arctan of 5x. Okay, so our derivative for that is equal to u prime over 1 plus u square. Derivative of arctan. And um, when we find our derivative of arctan, we will let u equal 5x. Therefore, u prime equals 5. However, we have x squared times arctan of 5x. So which rule do we have to use? We have to use one of our other derivative rules there. Let's write the product rule. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. All right, so the first times the derivative of arctan 5x. So u prime, which would be 5 over 1 plus u squared, 1 plus 5x squared, plus the second times the derivative of the first, so plus arctan, and we can write that as inverse tan for short here, times the derivative of the first, so derivative of x squared would be 2x, And let's put parentheses here. So arctan or inverse tan of 5x times 2x. And let's see here. Let's clean it up just a little bit. So h prime of x equals 5x squared over 1 plus 25x squared plus uh, 2x. And since they had arctan, I'll write that back in arctan, but you can use inverse. Either one of those should be correct. So arctan of 5x. So 2x times arctangent of 5x. And I would leave it just like that. All righty, my friend. Hope you found this video to be helpful. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.